What's up, YouTubers? Me, Iron Zaku, and Halfhorn are going to be doing an anime tier list. But this time, we're going to be doing a bit of a twist on it. Normally, we go to my anime list, hit the randomizer button to pick out the anime that we're going to be tiering. But this time, these two are going to be picking the anime that I'm going to be tiering. Dun, dun, dun. I kept this secret from these guys for far too long. I even kind of tried to piss them off for the last few days to make it even more spicy. And that is what we get when you leave us in the dark for so long. We were theorizing what it was going to be, but to my surprise, it was actually kind of worth hearing what the answer is. <laughs> so as I said, these two will be picking out the anime. They could, they're only limited though to what is available on my anime list's account. That could be phrased a bit better, but considering the website is called My Anime List, there's not really any other way to phrase that, is there? Not really, no. no. Yeah. Uh, big question, though, Hawthorne. Which one of us is going to start first? I do not know. Well, while you two decide, I'm going to be explaining the rules to our viewers. Over to you, RT. Thanks, RT. I'll get right on it. So just as I mentioned before, both Iron Sarko and Harford are allowed to pick anime from my personal My Anime List account. They can pick stuff from what I'm currently watching, complete, on hold, or even dropped. They're not allowed to pick from planning to watch because clearly I haven't watched them yet. Also to make things interesting, they're only allowed to pick 5 anime each. So in total we'll be ranking 10 anime for this list. And just like previous anime tier lists that we've done on this channel, we'll be ranking them using these tiers. So I know for the top we've got Masterpiece, which is 10 out of 10, absolutely amazing, we see no problems with it, we always want to sit down and watch these. We've got Amazing, these are amazing anime, they're not exactly masterpieces, but they're still amazing. We've got Good, which is like middle ground. These are pretty good anime, yes there's faults, but we still enjoy them. Then we have Watchable, which is anime which we can watch, but we're not exactly going to be wanting to watch these again, so they're like one-offs. And finally, Never Again, we don't want to watch this anime ever again, we don't even want to think about it. And of course, most importantly guys, these are our personal opinions. They're not the universal agreed opinions, they're not the greatest of opinions, they're just our personal opinions. So now that we've got the important details out of the way, why don't we cut you guys to Iron Zarko and Half Form picking out the anime that we're ranking for this list. While I mentally prepare myself for what these guys are going to be putting me through. And taking over from RT Duelist, me and Hawthorne are now here on RT Duelist's My Anime list, as you can see, and now we're going to choose out some of the animes for him to rank and discuss. And I can definitely tell that we're going to be in for quite a treat, am I right, Hawthorne? Oh, yes. You know what, since we have some, since I haven't talked about this anime in a while, because here's the thing, you know how sometimes he's like frozen high school DxD sometimes, or Konosuba? Mm. I know an anime, I know an anime that we can throw in for a second time that we haven't discussed in a long while, well, me and Reese. I think this was way before you went on YouTube and joined us. Have you ever heard of Afro Samurai? I have heard of Afro Samurai. Ah, uh, it's a really good one. It's got a very great English dub cast as well. So you know what? I think for my first one, I'm going to choose Afro Samurai. See what opinions have changed for Reese, because I still got a lot to say about this one again. <laughs> I think there's one that I want I want to do, and oh, that's one. Takagurui. Oh, yeah, yeah, Takagurui. I remember seeing that on Netflix. I haven't watched the anime, but I did see it advertised, and I thought it looked okay or interesting for the matter. So maybe I should add that on my watch list. Yeah, because I showed Arty the like first intro. Uh, the song's called "Deal with the Devil." Oh yeah. And the next conversation I had with this man, he told me he watched the entire series. Nice. Oh, I just noticed as well. I think he watched uh, the first season of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure from 2012. That's one that I believe combines both Phantom Blood and Battle Tendency. I'm kind of tempted to throw that one in there as well. Do you think we should? I think we should. In that case, that'll be my third choice at all. Technically, second choice. And I'll throw in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure then. So mark that down. <laughs> okay, I know the next one I want to do. Go on. Call Me Can't Communicate. 
Oh, yeah, you know what? We're going to throw it in there. Throw Comey on the list. You know, I'm going to scroll down quickly because I'm wondering if one of my childhood animes that I watched as a kid is there. Have you ever seen, by any chance, Sonic X? Yes, I have watched Sonic X. I think a lot of us did. I mean, I hope it's on his list. Question we did time. Have a quick is... run through this before this chat. Yeah. Oh, 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 we found we it. We had a look through the entire thing. Sonic X. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Wait a minute. Stop. Are you on that one? Stop. Look. Spirited Away, he rated 8 out of 10, but Sonic X a 9. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're going to be clowning him. Oh, man. <laughs> Something ain't so, right. Something ain't right here. So, let's put Sonic X as yours. Yeah, that's my third one. And I'll put Spirited Away as mine. Yeah, you can have that in there. So what, we've got about three each now. Yeah, so is it my turn now to pick another one? Okay, yeah. I just realised then. Okay, you can tell we're yeah. having a lot of fun going through a lot of his lists. Oh, speaking of fun, another child one. Uh... The earlier Transformers animes in this Unicron trilogy, all he's mm. got all three of them. Armada, Energon, and Cybertron. I mean, I did talk it... about Armada briefly before in the past, because that one, I think, was one of the first few animes I watched when I was a kid that got me into anime as a whole. And Transformers as well, in case you didn't know. Mm. That's I'm, all right. I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of tempted to put it back on there as well. Since I, I did discuss it before again. So, you know what? You know what? But my fourth one, I might as well throw another one. I'm going to throw in Transformers Armada. You're going to throw in Armada? Yeah, it, because again, it's one that I respect for getting me into anime. I mean, yes, I know it hasn't aged well over time. It's not the best Transformers show, but I still have fond memories of it. I think it's because of the fact that I played a lot of the Armada PS2 game when I was a kid, if you ever heard of it. Mm. That that game was my childhood. Uh, what fourth option do you want now, Hawthorne? And he also rates Violet Evergarden a 9 out of 10. Very respectable. Although that one episode always makes me cry. You all know yeah. what I'm referring to. I'm, I'm... going to be cruel. I'm going to be cruel. Oh no, what are you choosing? I'm picking Violet Evergarden, bitch. Oh no! <laughs> okay. I'm being cruel here. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, you know what? We're throwing Violet Evergarden, you know, just to be emotional bastards that we are. Holy crap, I had no idea that there was an X-Men anime. Hmm. Yeah, there's quite a few, like, Marvel anime. Oh, yeah, you are right. Hmm. I guess just to spice things up and throw a bit of Marvel in this anime list, we could include the X-Men anime. Yeah. I think I'm probably going to throw that in there because it's not long until after, I think, X-Men 97 comes out, or it could be out depending on the time this video is released. So, you know, mm. let's throw some X-Men in. I, and I found an anime I want him to rank. Ooh. This is going to Azelaine. be Azelaine. Azelaine. Lane, the animation. Never heard of it. Never seen it. But you know what? We'll add something that I've never seen yet. So that'll be your last option. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this uh, this tier list is going to be pretty interesting. Am I right? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I will get this made up and then ship it off to Arty. Absolutely. Cue to Arty, duelist in the future. All right, we're all set up now, ready for the tier list. And what the hell did you guys pick out? Some very, very interesting choices, shall we say. <laughs> I think we made pretty good choices, all things considered. Absolutely. Absolutely. To be fair, I was expecting a bit more revenge, so to say. I, I was expecting a lot more anime to throw, throw me under the bus with, or me to question why. But this seems a lot more tame than I was expected. I mean, it was either that or we were going to include all the sequel seasons of your favourite show, High School DxD, and I think we all know where that would have gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we knew where that would go. Yeah, we, we all knew. Uh, I'm, okay, I'm grateful, guys. I am grateful. I am grateful. Thank you. Okay, so who picked out the first anime? I think that would be me, if I remember. So anyway, first off, we have the anime adaptation of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I think specifically it's Phantom Blood Cross Battle Tendency. Exactly, because they comboed both parts 1 and 2 into one anime season. Hopefully that will avoid a lot of confusion. Yeah, it, it does. I, I remember finishing this a while back, because we started... Watching it together, Zaku, and uh, yeah. we, we, we never finished it. <laughs> so I bought the DVD set and I binge-watched it. And um, is it the best? Oh, 
honestly, no. <laughs> the, the, I think there's far better, like, action anime, in my opinion. I think you can even agree with that, despite you being a massive JoJo fan. I can agree to some extent. But why do they have to over-explain everything? I mean, it's like that for a lot of animes, if we're going to be honest. Like, how many <laughs> animes have we all seen where the main character or the major antagonist over-explains their movesets, what they're going to do, what the weakness is, and vice versa? It's kind of the charm of shonen anime in general. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, the way I prefer to describe JoJo is the gayest shonen anime ever. Oh, definitely, yeah. With lots and lots of muscular men duking it out. Yeah, that, that, that's something I just gotta ask. Why are the men more attractive than the women? Everyone in their own way is equally attractive, but yeah, the men, you know, strong muscles, strong torsos and all that, and vice versa. It's a very exaggerated. Similar to, again, Fist of the North Star, but way more, damn might I say, bizarre. <laughs> yeah, but Fist of the North Star doesn't have the Giga Chad that is Speedwagon. Oh, yeah, oh, Speedwagon. Yeah. One of the best characters in Phantom Blood. And also, speaking of Phantom Blood, any one of us want to go over the plot for that? From what, what I can remember, the first half deals with the first JoJo and Dio. Dio trying to basically get everyone's attention. He's been a sort of douche. He's wanting all this power. JoJo is being a real gentleman, uh, exposes Dio's malevolous schemes, and then somehow he becomes a vampire, takes over England, and is up to Jojo and his Harmon to save the day until he sinks to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> well, he Ooh, was going to take over England at some point, but thankfully, Jonathan Joestar and his trusty companions were there to save the day. And even though he may not be the most popular Jojo, I still think Jonathan is pretty good, and he's a very Again, as we all said, a very honourable gentleman. Even at one point early on before Dio becomes a vampire, he manages to finally have enough of his bullshit and beats the ever laughing crap out of him. I love that. All because Dio stole his girlfriend's first kiss from him. Never do that. That yeah. is the lowest of the low. Yeah, of course it was that moment that spawned the it was I, Dio meme that you see a lot. <laughs> Way back in the day. From this meme. And also, when it comes to Dio, man, in part one, he is such a menace as an antagonist. He is so good as a villain. Yeah, I got me shot straight up my um, villain ranking from just uh, using the oven in the worst way possible. Oh no! Oh, yeah. no. oh no! And if we go to part two, it's his grandson, right? Because we skipped over his dad. If that makes sense, so we, we're missing a generation. Am I, am I right about that? I mean, it does, I believe, skip ahead to 1940s, I believe, or was it yeah. in the late 1930s? Around the time during when I think World War II was going on, because that was when we had our second main JoJo protagonist, Joseph Joestar, and man, he is quite a trickster. I, I say he's more cocky than trickster. <laughs> yeah, I get it. He didn't, he's not got that much power with his hormone, so he tends to use it in much more clever ways, which I liked. I liked him being clever. But why the cockiness? Why was his catchphrase, and your next line is, why the hell is he posing so hard? Why the hell was he posing so hard? Wait, what? <laughs> exactly! I was like, there's no way yeah. that's a catchphrase. Well, the girl stars are posing. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Like, in comparison, if Jonathan was the guy that gets shit done with his physical prowess, Joseph thinks a lot more tactically. I mean, yeah, he may appear like a bubbling idiot, but deep down, man, has he got a lot of tricks up his sleeve. I do have one more question, though, before we get to the ranking, though. What's with all the posing? Uh, Jojo at its finest. Yeah. I mean, you can't deny it, they do pose quite amazingly. But why? <laughs> They're beautiful. Exactly. Exactly. Like I mean, I said, but... the gayest shonen anime of all time. But it does get crazier in later parts, obviously. I mean, I want to see what happens next, but honestly, I'm not jumping to see it. But I believe the next part is Stardust Crusaders with the third mainline JoJo, Jotaro. And I think, of course, Stardust Crusaders is one of the most popular parts because it does introduce stands into the series. So you're not going to see many characters use Haman as much. And stands are quite weird. 
And a lot more mm. posing while we're at it. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to put this in amazing. It's not entirely a masterpiece. Uh, there are far more better uh, action anime and over-explaining anime, in my opinion. I, th I think it's mainly, like, the fan base and the... Uh, what it's associated with. That kind of pivots me away from Masterpiece. I mean, there are better seasons later on down the line that do future parts of the JoJo manga more better than this one. I mean, you're still going to get constant good JoJo regardless. I mean, Stardust Crusaders, man, that was a good season. That was a good, good season. All right, what's the next one, guys? It is Spirited Away, which is one I chose. From the oh. legendary animation studio, Studio Ghibli. Oh, dear God. <laughs> what do you mean, oh, dear God? It's a classic. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. I get it. It's Studio Ghibli. It's praised so high because it's Studio Ghibli. But... <laughs> what I'm do you have to say? I think this is the only Studio Ghibli film I've seen. I think. I could be wrong. But I gotta say, Spirited Away, I was expecting just a bit more. How much Fair more? Enough. Like, okay, going through, the sto story-wise, little girl finds a spiritual place, parents get turned into pigs, she goes on an adventure trying to rescue them, while somehow being a part of this bathhouse with no face... I'm actually kind of surprised you remembered the name of that spirit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a it's a big meme now. Flashback. Why is it called No Face? It better be called No Legs. <laughs> or wait, wait. Is he hiding his face with, with that mask? What the hell? End of flashback. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, Truth be told, all right. While we're watching through this, me, Zaku, and Regal Chanel were watching this and I couldn't help but go f get flashbacks to when I was a child. Because growing up, all right, I used to go around to my grandparents' places a lot. And we had this uh, VHS cassette, if you remember those. Oh, of, yeah, um, I had one of those when I was a kid. Of old-time cartoons. And I, I swear, it was like I was watching some sort of, like, Alice in Wonderland knockoff. Like, a girl went down a rabbit hole, she goes on this crazy adventure... I felt like I was watching that. I wouldn't quite call it a knockoff of Alice in Wonderland, but I get what you mean. It's yeah, influence yeah. where you have a female character that yeah. stumbles upon a different world and spiritual entities and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. yeah when I watched it, I felt like that. It's very Lewis Carroll esque. Yeah, I'm not but calling with a Studio Ghibli twist. Yeah, I'm not calling Spirited Away an Alice in Wonderland knockoff. I'm saying what I watched when I was in my grandparents, was an Alice in Wonderland knockoff. Or maybe it was the original, before it became a Disney property. I think it was the uh, one before Disney. I honestly can't remember the name of it for the life of me. If I find it, I find it. If I don't, it oh well, use your imaginations. Hey, RT Duelist Editing Mode here with my specky specs. I thought I might interrupt this video to clarify some things. First of all, the Alice in Wonderland I watched when I was a child. I went back to my grandparents after I recorded this video and found the VHS tape. Turns out it was an Alice in Wonderland I was watching. It was just made in 1988. As for whether it predates Disney, no, Disney's version came out in 1951. So I was wrong completely about Alice in Wonderland and it being a knockoff. But to be fair, how was I supposed to know I was going off memory and I did not know the picks that these guys picked out? So I had no prep time to really look back on what I was going to talk about since I didn't know what I was going to be talking about. I was going off what I knew at the time of recording. So with all that said, I'm going to send you guys back to your regularly scheduled video. And if I ever mentioned Alice in Wonderland knockoff again, keep in mind that I'm talking about the 1988 version of Alice in Wonderland that I didn't know was an actual version. But, um, yeah, I felt like I was watching a bit of that for some reason. Maybe I was too, maybe I was too young to watch it, but I couldn't help but, like, 
feel like I was having the exact same experience, not being able to like fully keep track, but at the same time managing to follow the story somehow. I mean, you gotta admit though, the story overall is still pretty good and well written, and of course, the animation still holds up well even today. It is still beautiful to this very day. It is beautiful to look at. Oh yeah, yeah. the animation is top quality. I'll, I'll, I'll respect you, Studio Ghibli. For that, they always knock it out of the ballpark for great animation. And the music as well. It, it's also brilliant. It's one of my favorite Studio Ghibli soundtracks as well. Yeah. But I, I think I've struggled with that story. Who knows? Maybe I would feel a bit different if I didn't have that experience growing up with that Alice in Wonderland. But I, I can't help but in my mind, when I think about Spirit of Way, get Vietnam flashbacks to that point in my childhood watching this old story and just being confused about it. Don't get yeah. me wrong, Spirited Away is really good. I do like it. And, and also, I just remembered as a fun fact, it also in the English dub for the main character, Chihiro, who is voiced by the same voice actress who did Leo in Leo, Lo and Stitch. <laughs> oh, God. So if you wonder why the voice sounded familiar, that is why. Yeah. Because I think... At the time when this came out, Disney were distributing a lot of Studio Ghibli films in America, but here in the UK, I believe it's done through a different company. So uh, that explains a lot. Yeah. yeah. So in a weird way, you can kind of, sort of, under the right lenses, call them semi-Disney films? But I wouldn't go too far saying full Disney, obviously. Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't call it full Disney. I mean, of course, it is one of my personal favorites. And for me personally, I would put Spirited Away, obviously, into Masterpiece. For me, obviously. Yeah. Hoffman, what about you? I would put it in Amazing. Don't get me wrong, it is a phenomenal movie. But because you pointed out the sort of similarities to Alice in Wonderland, I can't unsee them now. <laughs> Even if it does have similarities, you can't deny it does do pretty good with what it does. It puts its own twist on that sort of yeah. storyline. Yeah. Uh, I was honestly going to say, oh, I'm not going to go like, I hate for this. I Good. mean, no matter what you do, no matter what you do, it's yeah. going to happen, but we'll be there. We'll be there for you. I was going to just put in Good, honestly. Maybe, Ooh. maybe, maybe, because I'm probably spoiled for choice. We only watched Spirited Away at the time it was recording, like, like, what, a few months ago? So, I believe yeah, so. Yeah, because I've then seen a ton of stuff since... There. Maybe, uh, like, Avatar, I mentioned in one of my Did You Know Facts, Avatar got inspiration for the spirit world from Spirited Away. Maybe it's because I've been spoiled by that, possibly. Or maybe other mm. animes and cartoons that involve the spirit world. Maybe I'm spoiled because of that. I've watched what they got inspired from before I watched the inspiration. But honestly, after talking with you guys, I'm going to actually bump it up to... Amazing, because again, it's Studio Ghibli. If I focus on the animation, the music, and parts of the story, yes, it is amazing. But again, probably the main reason I'm thinking it's good is again all the stuff that I grew up with that Alice in Wonderland yeah. sort of story. So I'm trying to put that to a side, and honestly, I do think of it pretty amazing. Okay, I can see what the next one is, and I bet I can guess who chose this one, but still. Introduce it, mystery person. Yes, it was me, Hawthorne, who chose this. It is Kakagurui. And I said this in the recording between me and Zaku. I showed you the intro for this, the first one, Deal with the Devil. Yeah. My next conversation with you, I heard you binged the entire series. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I haven't seen this one in its entirety, but I have like seen some bits online, and my own conclusion was this is the anime where your main character girl gets horny for gambling. <laughs> Basically, yeah. So yeah. school has like an underground gambling ring. The teachers endorse it, and there is one girl who only gets off with the gambling with a loaded gun. That's that is a main... lot to take in. That's not even our main character. <laughs> Is, no, that's not even yeah. the main character. I love as well that because she does, our main character is like, who the hell is this person? I don't associate with her. I guess shot down so hard. <laughs> I just love that. 
I do like some of the games they play. It, it's quite interesting, especially like how like some of them try to cheat during the games. It reminds me of Season Zero Yu-Gi-Oh in some ways, since uh, they both evolve around games and like one person trying to cheat their way out. But Kakagururi adds the gambling aspect just a bit, so it kind of wraps up the pressure compared to Yu-Gi-Oh! Season Zero, with life or death, or your life is going to get shattered. So remember kids, do not gamble. But I gotta admit, I like the whole um, male character, like not being that much of a gambler, being like the audience surrogate to ask what on earth's going on. Like understanding the gambling mindset and why characters get off to gambling. Especially that speech he gave at like the end of the episode. And uh, like at certain points we meet up, we see our main characters just like enjoying herself to what he's saying. But where to poor Kakaguri? And now, like I said, I haven't seen it as much, so I'm going to leave this ranking to you, obviously. So I'm just going to be there for the ride. <laughs> Half on, I'm betting you're putting this in Masterpiece if it was you, aren't you? Yeah, I'm putting it in Masterpiece for the simple fact that the animation does not need to go as hard as it does. I know, yeah, the animation goes extremely hard. Uh, I don't know why, but it does feel sort of bad to put in Masterpiece. But that could just be me. Uh, it feels wrong to put it in Masterpiece. I mean, think about this. If you put it in Masterpiece, you're going to be putting this above Spirited Away. Which I do not think it kind of deserves, even though I haven't even seen the anime. But again, if I did, <laughs> my opinion could change. Who knows? But think about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, all right, all right. To, to save you, we'll put in Amazing. Yes. <laughs> uh, you're over there, Alphorn? Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah. There is one anime on here that I will riot if you don't put it in Masterpiece. <laughs> Take it away. Take it away. Do, do um, hard. It's not the next one. So the next one is Azelaine. This is also one I picked. And this is also another one I haven't seen, but I'll let you take it from here. And I've got a bit of a bone to pick with this one. Oh, I'm going to grab the popcorn for this. (laughs) It's it's not for what you think. It's not that I hate it. As I knock my camera. It's because I couldn't keep track of what was going on. Spirit Away, at least I could keep track of some of it. This one... I have no idea what is going on. I picked this out from a shop because I like the look of the cover. But then when I went to watch it, I was like, I'm missing something here. Is there a season before this? Is this a season two? And then when I finished watching it, hoping that I would be able to follow it, I learned that this was based upon a video game. So no wonder I couldn't figure it out. I now know what Zaku feels like. When we were talking about Hyperdimensional Neptunia, there we go. Because I mentioned how much I like that anime, despite playing the games. Because Hyperdimensional Neptunia at least explains itself within the anime about what's going on. And you can look into the lore to look further in depth, like what the characters are based off, or to even play the games. This one, I couldn't understand what was going on. You clearly have to be a fan of the games to know what on earth is going on in this anime because I couldn't so basically out. as a newcomer you're going to be confused as hell going what the heck is this yeah yeah pretty much I, I don't know what on earth was going on I like the battleship motif so I love the armory that they did but that's as far as yeah, it like went it. yeah I mean have you guys even seen this anime or played its games Briefly heard of it, but not to a grand extent where I watched it. Again, this is something where I think Hawthorne is more qualified to talk about, so I'll let him have the mic. I haven't actually played Azulane. I'm just reading from the wiki article here. Azulane is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up created by Chinese developers, them, <laughs> just in 2017 them. for iOS and Android operating systems. And as far as I know, it's another gacha game. Oh, that explains right. why I never played it there, because it was one of those mobile games then. Yeah, I don't really do that much mobile gaming. Just yeah, mobile I'm not really count. into, like, gachas and all that and vice versa, but I can understand why it has an audience, but I can do better without it. Yeah. Were it initially released as a gacha game... But then it evolved, didn't it? 
Yeah. I mean, clearly so, because at least down the line, it's somehow got its own anime adaptation. Nah. One that I haven't watched, but I'm happy that some people might get a kick out of it, maybe. Uh, but you, you two haven't really watched this anime, have you? No. So, I don't think people... I mean, I think it's only because I have not really... Don't really know what I'm doing. I'm going to put in... Watchable? Because it's not a never again. Maybe one day I'll pick this up again, go through my collection and go like, mm, maybe I should try the game to see where I go from. And like, it's not a never again. It hasn't sworn me away yet. But okay. for right now, it's a watchable. And uh, hopefully what is going to be a lot more than watchable is the next selection I chose because I didn't realize it had an anime series. The anime adaptation of X-Men. Yeah, this, this is really good, X-Men. Is it on the same level of, of like, 97 and 97? <laughs> yeah. Like, again, the only reason why I remember that, why I chose this, because I believe at the time when I did that recording with you, Hawthorne, was because X-Men 97 was going to be coming out. And it is out now in its first few episodes. And what, from what I've heard, it's actually pretty good, 97. Hmm. Yeah. I've seen some clips. Yeah. yeah. I haven't watched it yet. But what is... X-Men the anime. Well, this takes place after the events of the Phoenix Saga. So Jean Grey has sacrificed herself in order to stop the Phoenix. And Cyclops, Storm, Beast, Wolverine are there and watch her sacrifice herself. But during the death, Jean psychically links herself to Cyclops to say goodbye. And Cyclops sees someone in the background look like she's controlling Jean. So it starts off with that. So they start off with already losing someone. After that, they go on uh, their separate ways, only to come back after they hear about mutant disturbance in Japan. As in, like, some people are disappearing. So it's up to them to come back together and figure out who... Is doing this, by the way, I'm going to get involvement from not only the U-Men, a Ooh. group that steals the organs of Ooh. mutants and okay. put them into themselves. Stealing and organs and selling them on the black market, I guess? Or stitch them into themselves, so they have the oh. powers. And the Inner Circle, which is like a bunch of mutants who want to be on the top of the totem pole. Oh, so basically, it's like the mutant equivalent of the Illuminati or something. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. interesting. Mm. They do also come across... Um, who's that mutant that turns itself into diamonds with psychic powers? Emma yeah, Frost. Uh, there we go. Oh, so yeah. Emma Frost, the one. Yeah, Emma Frost, exactly. Yeah, uh, we also get armor. Basically, can project aura-like armor. We do get some cameos as well. Like, uh, we only see him in, like, brief shots of, like, other mutants. Colossus. Union Jack and Deadpool. Yeah, they don't have speaking roles. We just see them like during the final episode or two. And I take it with good faith that the anime also does the main cast of the X Men that we all know and love. Some really good justice in anime form. Yeah, the, I, I like them. At Logan slash Wolverine and Cyclops. They feel like frenemies in a certain way. Like they're really best friends, but they like to pick on each other. I don't know how faithful that is, though, because from my knowledge, those two do not get along. I mean, they haven't been getting along for, like, a bunch of, like, different comic book storylines or, like, early adaptations. Like, I remember it being like that kind of in the 90s anime, animated oh. series of X-Men. Why did I say anime? <laughs> <laughs> Storm is a pretty good character. She's like the calm mind of the group, the, the one who tries to keep the level head. I like Beast here, using his scientific brain to try and solve problems. So again, it just knocks it out the park with making sure the characters are well written and adaptate, adapted for anime form. Which, if that is the case, I'm definitely going to have to keep an eye out for this one then. I think I just really, though, was shocked to say that it started with um, the Phoenix Force uh, blowing up Jim Grey. Yeah, it, it was surprised to see that. So they definitely started things off with a bang, literally. So I guess that's one way. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm going to put this in amazing, mainly because I'm not an X-Men fan. I like them, but I'm not going to go jump in to watch X-Men. But I can appreciate the Marvel story that they've done, the artwork, the visuals, they're beautiful. The fight choreography was amazing. That's enough for me to put in amazing. Is it a masterpiece though? I'm not really the man to say because I'm not an X-Men fan. 
but I can really appreciate the story. I mean, as an X-Men fan myself, I am already mentioned this, I'm probably going to have to add this to my watch list as well, just to see how it really knocks it out the park, because, uh, God, you, you can just tell how much of a fan of X-Men I am. <laughs> <laughs> and next up is the anime that features the man who will cut the whole world in half for the number one headband, Afro Samurai. Boy, I got a lot to say about this one. I bet you do. This is one of your all-time favorites. I mean, even for a 2007 anime, yes, it came out in 2007, the animation still holds up extremely well and the action sequences are sick and brutal in the best way possible. And also, can we also address quickly that in the English dub for this, they got huge names involved. Samuel L. Jackson, the man who loves anime, to be the voice of both Afro and his companion, Ninja Ninja. That is some legendary name already back in this anime. So, uh, should I take over for how the plot goes for this one, guys? You kind of already said at the beginning, his goal is to get the number one headband. Pretty much, and for good reason as well, because this is pretty much a revenge anime story where we follow Fro, who early on we see as a kid, whose father dons the number one headband, who is basically god of the world of Afro Samurai, challenging a man who has the number two headband called Justice, voiced by Ron Pullman. So, here's how it works. In this world, you have two headbands, the number one and the number two. If you have the number one, you are basically god of this world. No one can lay a finger on you, except for whoever dons the number two headband. So the number two can have the right to challenge number one. But there's a huge catch. Unlike number one, where no one can challenge you, anyone can hunt you down just to steal the number two headband from you to challenge number one. That's a lot of headbands, I know. <laughs> so after his fight with Justice, Justice pulls a very dirty trick and kills Afro's father right in front of him. And that's when the main story pretty much kicks in, where Afro is consumed by rage and anger. And throughout his life, he dons the number two headband just so that he can avenge his father. And of course, another thing to highlight as well with how this anime is pretty entertaining is that, is that I really like the uh, hip-hop soundtrack as well. Similar to something like uh, another anime I talked a long time ago, Samurai Champloo. But this one, of course, hits all the right notes, especially with the more quieter, somber, and kick-ass action moments as well. Yeah. And I just remembered something else as well. <laughs> what, what did you remember? You know how some animes like to do some quote-unquote fan service? Yeah. Well, here comes Afro Samurai and is like, you know what? Fuck fan service. We're going to give the viewer exactly what they want. <laughs> so you're going to have lots of not safe for work moments with TNA galore. <laughs> it ain't got time for fan service, especially if your anime has Samuel Jackson involved. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but even though I do love Afro Samurai, I do love it, I will say... It does have some faults, because the story is, while delivered really well, it is pretty simplistic. You know, simple characters, simple revenge story, and vice versa. Not that it's bad, but if you were hoping it had a bit more meat to the bone, you might be disappointed. And plus, you can easily binge this in a day, since it does have five episodes. Yeah. Sometimes uh, that's all an anime really needs. A, a simple story to explain what's going on, then build into the complex stuff later on. I always find that the more popular animes, or at least uh, anime that take off on their own, start off simple. Now, weirdly enough, you might be thinking I would put this in Masterpiece, but again, I don't think it quite qualifies for that tier. But I still have a bit of a soft spot for it as well. So I might give out my own personal rating and say Afro Samurai is a really amazing anime. I get... Okay. Continuing on, though, we can definitely tell this is one of your favorites because of the way you kept going on and on and on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just sat back and you were taking over the entire time here. Um, but yeah, I can only remember certain details of Afro Samurai. I do not remember the fan service things. Maybe it's because it's not on par with all the other fan service anime that I know of. Again, like I mentioned, it just skips ahead of the fan service is like, we're going to give you exactly what you came for. Yeah. <laughs> it's Which... one of those way more mature animes. Another personal gripe I do have besides the simplistic story is that the antagonist we get, Justice, although delivered excellently by Ron Perlman, he's not really in the show as much. You do see him early on, 
as I mentioned with the revenge, some flashbacks, and a final episode. My dogs are barking again. <laughs> <laughs> Your dogs want to join in the video! Maybe I shall torture them by subjecting them to Afro Samurai. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Alright, um... I, I like that, though, uh, going back to the villain. They, they used him sparingly. And the dogs uh, want to disagree with me! Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna check up on them. You may want to stop recording. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be back. All right. Two hours later. So, I can barely remember some, the whole story from Apple Samurai, but I can appreciate why I can remember of it, and um, well, the fact that you overly enjoy it. So, I'm gonna put Afro Samurai in amazing as well. I agree, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I might, I do highly love it, but I wouldn't call it a masterpiece. But I do yeah. think it is a kick-ass anime. You got on it. All right, next one. I got on it. I'm really excited for this one. Who did this one? Who did this one? I believe it that was Hawthorne. Mean... Hawthorne strikes again. It is Comey can't communicate. <laughs> you picked an absolute great one. I already know where to put this one, but. That we need to talk about before we actually do that, though. Yeah, take it from here. So, yeah, the story revolves around our mute girl who gets extreme anxiety, struggles to speak, but luckily her new BFF of life is helping her get out of her shell, and we learn about this crazy group of characters and watch this shy girl slowly come out of her shell and get her quest of getting 100 friends. That is a very respectable goal. 100 friends. I could, I find that very wholesome. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice wholesome anime. There's nothing wrong with the wholesome anime. I absolutely love Call Me Can't Communicate. Honestly, the next season, if there is a next season coming, cannot come out any faster. It needs to come out as soon as possible. I want my wholesomeness filled. I even watched some of the live action adaptation of Comic Con Communicate and it is so sweet. I had absolutely no idea there were live action adaptations. Yeah, this is a Japanese live action adaptation, so it's a lot more faithful to the source material than, say, something like Netflix. Ah, uh, makes sense. Yeah. Although, imagine how cursed that a Netflix live action adaptation of this would be. You can't <laughs> honestly mess up uh, this. You can't honestly mess up the live action adaptation. Unless you make the girl speak more than she should. I mean, to be fair, they did One Piece pretty well a long while ago, so maybe it might not be bad, fingers crossed. Otherwise, we might just have another Death Note slash Cowboy Bebop fiasco again. Uh, let's give some Netflix some credit here. They're doing well with Avatar. I actually thought it was alright. But back to Comey, though. <laughs> yeah. Comey, Comey, me and gay. Yeah, it's extremely wholesome. I love the characters. The manga is so sweet. I'm loving the manga. I'm reading through the manga as much as I can. And honestly, I couldn't help but spoil myself for something that's going to happen. But honestly, I was rooting for that thing to happen anyway. I'm not going to say what for anime-only yeah. watches. Yeah, but yeah, this, absolutely. But this is going straight into Masterpiece. Because it is! I'm not getting any butts about it! I mean, you did put it above Spirited Away, but you know, I'll let that slide once. <laughs> uh, You're not gonna let that go, are you? Not throughout this entire video. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, to be fair though, a long time ago when I did do like an old tier list, I did put Spirited Away at the very top, so I guess this equals it out. Oh no, landmine! Landmine! Oh, no. Guys, this. we got depression now. We got the opposite of Comey. Who did this? It was me. Again! It was <laughs> the one and only. Violet Evergarden. Why? I'm just going to say my personal rating right out the bat, despite its reputation, masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> Look, okay. I, before we rate it, obviously, we could talk about it. But uh, yeah. I have to get that out of the way. It is my first question. Why? And why? I mean, it's... Okay, let's just get... Yeah, let's get the positives out, obviously. Again, it's from Kyoto Animation, obviously, Kyoani. And it's probably one of the most beautiful, stunning animes that they've ever worked on. Like, is like it goes above and beyond in terms of visual presentation. Like, I have to imagine, like, it has to be one of those like ten out of ten beautiful looking animes. Maybe above that for a laugh, like eleven out of ten, just because it breaks through the scale because of how good it looks. It is beautiful. 
I am no. going to say that. It is absolutely stunning. You guys are kind of skipping the story, though! <sighs> so, basically, a war veteran who lost both her arms trying to save her commanding officer becomes a ghostwriter in this world called an auto memories doll to learn his last words that she ever heard which are i love you and then to over time in the series regain the emotions that she never had because of the entire time she knew nothing but blood and warfare that is honestly so sweet just doing writing for people so she can learn what i love you really means and a lot of the stories that we do follow her in each of the episodes are still really entertaining with the fact that it does give us a wide range of different characters, storylines, and we do get to explore and see more of the world of Violet Evergarden. I know there's a movie that I really want to watch. I just well, technically two. Two? <laughs> yeah, yes. there's two movies. There is Eternity and the Auto Memory Doll which is arguably my favourite movie. And the second one just being Violet Evergarden, the movie. The movie. <laughs> I only know it's Violet Evergarden, the movie, so I'm probably picking up that one. But I did not know about the second one. Yeah, just watch that one first, and then get to the movie, which... Ah, oh, man. <laughs> That's why this is a flipping landmine. We, we all know what, what I'm talking about here, don't we? The Illusionist uh, episode... What number was it again? <laughs> ten. Ten! I mean, we might as well rip off the band-aid because it has been years since this anime came out. So, yes, this one broke me. And it likely broke millions of people that watched it. I'm one of those people, and I was already broken. I mean, are we going to discuss what made us cry about this particular episode? I think we don't. I think it goes without say for people who have already watched it. But for those who haven't watched it, I feel sorry for you guys. You need to try Violet Evergarden. At least watch episode 10 on its own and learn the pain that we had to go through. And if you don't I mean, feel, obviously, you'd I, have to like watch this in entirety first, but I get what you mean. Yeah, but if you don't feel anything from that episode, what's wrong with you? You need help. Yeah, just, just, just what is wrong with you? We I mean, live... I'm usually, I mean, it, it's hard to make me cry in pieces of media, but this one, man, my eyes were crying like it was Niagara Falls. We, I think like we watched this together. We got to episode 10, and we just did not talk to yeah. each other for a very long time. Just <laughs> yeah, because of this episode. Now. <laughs> we just didn't talk to each Because Hawthorne, <laughs> many years back when I showed Reese Violet Evergarden, that after when that episode was done, we didn't talk for a while. <laughs> we just did not know what to say to each other after that episode. No. It was just like, we don't want to look at each other. What have we done? I, we can't look at each other because now we're just going to get Vietnam flashbacks to that episode. I mean, everybody gets Vietnam flashbacks for episode 10. But again, again now, if we're going to bury it for a wee bit, pun intended, I know, bury to episode 10 now and let us just come to, let us just get to the ultimate conclusion. Violet Evergarden, the anime series, as a whole, is the definition of masterpiece. I mean, we could be a lot more cruel and play Never Again just because we can't go through that again. But yeah, definitely a masterpiece. I mean, you know, I would not blame you if you did for a joke put it in Never Again just for that one episode because, man, I don't know if I have the emotional fortitude to go through it again. Like, the very last time I can recall something that made me cry as much was the ending for season one of Telltale's The Walking Dead. But this... This might take the cake. Do not put it in never again, please. <laughs> <laughs> please do not put it there. No. This, this no. is the one I said I would riot if it wasn't a masterpiece. <laughs> oh. 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 But again, let's just, let's all agree. Violet Evergarden. One of the best animes ever made, I think. It's yeah, Definitely. Definitely. And now, to hopefully uh, 
lighten ourselves up with the opposite of depression is a childhood favorite of ours that introduced us to the blue blood himself, Sonic X. Gotta go fast! I love this song and the anime, yeah. to be fair. Yeah, it did give us the iconic gotta go fast. Although, if you were in the UK, it did play a different theme song, but again, we could all agree that Gotta Go Fast is the show's national anthem. Oh, definitely. Why, why did the UK get a different theme song? Am I the only one who thinks that's weird? I mean, it's good, but come on, Gotta Go Fast is the best. Oh, definitely. And I think this is probably like a lot of people's introduction to Sonic. Because I think before then, it was like The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Sonic Underground. Okay, so, how do we remember Sonic X over the years? I honestly remember it fondly. Beautiful. Sonic Sonic gets transported to our world along with his friends, Eggman, thanks to the power of chaos control, he interacts with Chris, learns about our world, stops Eggman, and uh, all the stuff that's related to the Chaos Emeralds, all four attempts to go home. And if I recall correctly as well, in one of the seasons, they did do an adaptation of the events of Sonic Adventure 2, though I think the game does that a bit more better. Project Shadow? Yeah, with Shadow yeah. the Hedgehog. Yeah, the games do it a bit better, but that's because it's a game that can go into a bit more detail. But with um, Sonic X, I like what we saw, because it made Shadow a bit more of a mysterious character, which I liked. How do we all feel about Sonic X? after all these years. Now, if you want my opinion on how I feel about Sonic X as a whole when it comes to rating it, I would kind of be generous and maybe put it in good. Because again, in the grand scheme of things when it comes to Sonic Media, there are better stories, better shows, but this one I still have a bit of fondness for. Maybe yeah. it's because of nostalgia. Per maybe it's because of nostalgia. I love it for pretty much the same reasons that Zaku said that it's just iconic. In and I'm gonna be a bit shameless here, it gave me my favorite Eggman line ever. I pretended I was a bar of soap and gave them all the slip. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. As for me, Sonic X is one of my three favorite media of Sonic. The other two being the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog and the live-action movie. But Sonic is being more of a video game character. That's where he shines the most. So it's understandable why Sonic X is probably not like everyone's first thought when it comes to Sonic media, because they're always focused more on the games rather than media. And if mm. you think about Sonic X compared to like all other animes that are out there, ones that were rated in the past, and, of course, ones that are rating right now, Sonic standing up to some of these, I have to say he, Sonic X is good. It's not, like, absolute ma amazing masterpiece. Maybe when it was coming out, because it was fresh, it was new, Sonic's on the screen, running around, yay! But these days, no. Not, no, not really, no. And last up, guys, it, wait, we already did this one, right? <laughs> I think I did a long time ago when I was starting off on YouTube, believe it or not. Probably. Is this your one? Oh, wait. Yep, yeah, it is. It's another childhood classic of mine that got me into anime, Transformers Armada. So you picked one out from your own list. Yep, <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did again, because I was like, you know, we haven't discussed about this one in a long time. Let's bring it up again. And plus, we all love Transformers, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Transformers Armada, it's the first line of the Unicron Trilogy, the other two being Energon and Cybertron. Transformers Armada's gimmick focuses around the Minicons, and so mm. the Autobots and Decepticons race to try and get all the Minicons and eventually take on the big bad of the series, Unicron. And it is kind of entertaining for the fact that they did get the voices of Optimus and Megatron from the Beast Wars series back, Gary Chalk and David Kay, which was still pretty good, you gotta admit. Yeah, really good. I think like Armada, yeah, Armada's the second Transformers that I started off with, the first one being the 2000 Robots in Disguise. Oh so. yeah, that one did come up before Armada, so 
yeah. yeah. Because that one was anime as well, if I recall. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, an adaption of Car Robot. Uh, oh, which, right. Which was, believe it or not, it's actually linked to G1. Right. But, but uh, dubbed-wise, no, it's not linked to G1. Hey, but mm. going back to Armada, the toys is what stands out for me, though. <laughs> the to- I love the toys. The, the, the amount of toys. I mean, yeah. to be fair, Transformers is known to just sell toys and that, but back then, I, I loved them as well. If I, when I was a kid, I remember having like the Optimus Prime one and vice versa. I loved them so much that I did buy the original Unicron. I think what makes Armada, the Unicron trilogy as a whole, stand out even more is that it's one of the first projects where it's a combined effort from the American and the Japanese company together because um, they were exchanging information back and forth to try and make this trilogy. I remember this because when Cybertron came out, there was a bit of miscommunication that Japan thought it wasn't going to be a third continuing storyline. It was just going to be its own separate thing. And then when it got dubbed, they had to try and fix as much of that as possible, but didn't. (laughs) That a, probably explains why Cybertron felt kind of weird narratively. Yeah. In some ways. Also, I want to say another thing about Amada that also gets your blood pumping for it. The theme song kicks ass. Oh, definitely. And I still should remember it as well. It did give us one of the better incarnations of Starscream, surprisingly. Oh, yeah. So much so that fanboys and fangirls made music videos to honour their um, beloved Starscream. AMVs, I believe they're called? Yeah, AMVs, isn't it? Yeah. Like, they were everywhere back in the day. They were everywhere. Yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah, just because of the fact that after when, like, Megatron turns to Galvatron and Starscream, well, it's still named Starscream, but for some reason he just has the colour scheme of Thundercracker goes up against him and sacrifices himself in a valiant effort against Unicron. But onto the ratings... Uh, I feel like I'm going to get some a look from Zaku, but I feel like he's going to agree with me once I say why. And we're going to put this into good, the same level as Sonic X. I thought for a moment you were going to put this in watchable. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I'm not that bad. What? Transformers Armada is always got a special place in my heart because it's one of the first medias of Transformers I ever watched. The reason why I'm putting it good is it's the same thinking pattern I've got with Sonic X. Compared to other vast media of Transformers, there are better medias out there for it. And compared to a bunch of anime that we've watched, including like Japanese exclusive Transformers anime, yeah, there are better options. Such as Transformers Animated or, more specifically, Transformers Prime. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think I agree in putting it in good for a similar reason to Sonic X. It was like another gateway into anime when I was young. It got me into the genre, got me into Transformers, and I'll always look back upon it with some fondness. Yes, I can acknowledge that obviously it has its issues. Yes, it may not have aged well in it, in the animation department, since it does look a bit rough. I can't bring myself to hate it, you know? No. I can't. And there we have it, guys. These are the rankings for anime my friends picked out. I'm so grateful they were nice to me. They probably won't do that again. But, Remember, but... Reese, it could have been worse. It could have been a lot been worse. So much worse. Uh, so, would you guys agree with the rankings that we've given this so far? I mean, I would yeah. not. I mean, I would bob spirited away to Masterpiece, but other than that, yeah, it's good. You knew what you were getting into when I suggested made this video (laughs) yeah i guess so but i had a lot of fun though i had a lot of fun that's good will we do this again no way not time not anytime soon not quite anytime soon but if we were going to do it this again don't worry we we will pick some more worse options (laughs) so with all that said i've got some questions for you guys what do you think do you guys like this list? Do you think that we raised some anime too high or rated them too low? Let us all know in the comment section down below and don't forget to let us know where you would put these anime. Leave it all down in the comment section below. And heck, while you're down there, why don't you go in ahead and backhand the subscribe button? It really helps this channel out. So, way, I'm going to go hunting for Violet Evergarden's movies. So, until next time, guys, this is us signing out. Bye bye. Bye bye. 
see ya.